and then we have Lieutenant Cleary, <laughs> Lieutenant Ferris, <laughs> Lieutenant Engelbert, <laughs> Lieutenant Timmerman, <laughs> and Lieutenant Curtis. And if I miss anyone, again, my apologies. We welcome you and uh, thank you for um, coming to this presentation today. Next, real quick, we're going to introduce our CAT board members. CAT board members, if you can just wave for me. Uh, I have Alicia Lucero. She is right up here up front. <laughs> she's the one that, she's the glue behind this board, right? <laughs> uh, I have Beth Brody, my co president here. <laughs> Keith Sesney. Linda Ferry, Linda Tafoya, Mark Palter, Margaret Chavez, Melissa Fox, Mike O'Neill, uh, and Division Chief uh, Kyle is also on our board and Rob Collins will um, be here shortly. Um, thank you all for coming um, and thank you for, for being here today because I know everyone is incredibly busy. To give you a little background about Citizens Appreciate Police, also known as CAP, we honor officers of the Denver Police Department who serve the community above and beyond the call of duty. Formed in 1978 by Mayor Bill McNichols and District Attorney Dale Tooley, CAP is a nonprofit organization whose intention is to promote awareness within the community of the dedication displayed regularly by members of the Denver Police Department. The mission of the CAP board is to seek out and publicly acknowledge these deserving officers. The CAP award consists of a plaque and a pin. This pin is the only civilian awarded pin allowed to be worn on a Denver police officer's uniform. Presentations of these awards take, take place four times a year, and to date, more than 530 members of the, police of the Denver Police Department have received a CAP award. We hope as we honor our award recipients today, we also indirectly honor the numerous untold stories of our Denver police officers who serve our community above and beyond the call of duty daily. All right, our first presenter that's going to come up is Mark Palter. Thank you. Well, good morning. If at this time we could ask uh, Officer Jonathan Hayes, Cassandra Ulrich, Isel Justo of Santiago, Emma Sherhart, and Jose Marenquez to come up. Jose is not here either, huh? So we, uh, this is an award actually going to seven individuals, the uh, four that are standing before you, and Officer Matthew Prell, who could not be here, and Officer Kristen Miller, and Officer uh, Jose Marenquez. Uh, I'm going to tell you a little story here. First of all, uh, my uh, quick background to tell this story is I was the uh, director of the Colorado Organized Crime Strike Force, 35-year prosecutor. Michael Neal's the only one old enough to remember the strike force. <laughs> in, my, in my 35 years as a prosecutor, I ran various specialized units, the West Metro Drug Task Force and a number of others. And one of the things you always did in these units, uh, and my involvement, of course, was as a hobby cop, but what they uh, really do in these units, you always had these operations going on. And we always named these operations some cute little thing that we could all remember and uh, some of them we couldn't talk about in a grand jury and the like. But I want to talk to you about an operation today that I refer to as Operation Toys for Ten. On Christmas Eve 2022, while working the telephone report unit, Officer Jonathan Hayes took a stolen vehicle report from a 65-year-old grandfather of ten grandchildren. 
The grandfather was the guardian and sole provider for these grandchildren. The grandfather restarts, reported that he started his car and ran back to check the front door to his home when an unknown suspect took off in his car, which contained all of the Christmas presents intended for the grandchildren. Officer Hayes learned that the grandfather had no resources to replace the gifts and began looking for assistance for this family. Now we've all seen movies and television shows portraying law enforcement preparing for drug raids or hostage rescue. We've seen briefing rooms where it's decided what weapons to use, what approach to make and alike. Well, this case, Officer Hayes began to develop the strategy, the tactical strategy to help this family. He contacted Officer Marinquez, who reached out to command staff, I believe Division Chief Sanchez, to get approval to help this family and to help it by a tactical approach. The first approach was to get funds to help this family, and this was done by calling on the generosity of other Denver police officers. Once the financial tactical approach was successful through the generosity of the officers being recognized today and others, they raised $500. Using the $500 collected, Officer Hayes called upon Officers Ulrich, Miller, Prell, uh, Justo Santiago, and Shearhart to determine what gifts to seek. Now, I'm sure this tactical team determined information based on each child and decided what each child would be able to receive a gift with the money available. The next tactical step was to go to Target to buy gifts. And I can just imagine the customers in Target on that uh, Christmas Eve when a number of police came in and began to look around, spread out, and started her search to please the 10 children they'd never met. No drugs were seized, no hostages rescued, no arrests made. Instead, gifts were obtained and delivered. I'm sure this act, tactical operation will bring brought many multiple smiles. The individual involved here, the grandfather, was not able to join us today, but he did send a note. And it said, they came through for me. They were stand-up officers for me when my car was stolen. All my gifts for my grandchildren were in there. I'm not sure how to describe the officers, but they were brilliant. I wasn't expecting them to do that. I really respect them for what they did because they didn't have to. They didn't have to do it at all. Later that same evening, they called me and asked if it was okay to come to my house, and I said yes and they showed up with the gifts. It was magnificent. We have a great Christmas due to the Denver Police Department. It is an honor to present the CAP Award to these officers and to thank them for their effort to going beyond standard police work to provide a happy Christmas for 10 grandchildren. Thank you. until 2 p.m. And Jonathan and Matt uh, come into my office. 2 p.m., I am getting ready to walk out. I think I'm in my sweatpants. I am walking out the door, and they tell me what they got going on. And the first thing in my head is like, 
gosh. I know what the right thing to do is, but God, I don't want to go home. Um, Matt and, and uh, Jonathan were just about to get off themselves. I know Jonathan has young kids and, and a family to get to on Christmas Eve. Uh, they, those two uh, initially stopped everything. And then Cassie back there, I knew exactly where to go. So uh, really, uh, th so much more than what was just read went into this. And really, personal time on Christmas Eve with your families went into taking care of, of this man and his grandchildren. So uh, personally, my hat's off for everything you did that day. That was amazing. Thank you so much. Um, congratulations to all those amazing officers uh, from District 6 and from our traffic unit. Um, recognizing that area. I know we have um, some command staff here from there today, so thank you for being here for them. Uh, our next award presenter coming up is Melissa Fox. Good morning. Let me just have one moment. Um, I am the uh, proud person who gets to introduce uh, Detective Catherine Urbina, if she's here, do you want to come on up? Urbina. Urbina, thank you. <laughs> detective Urbina is assigned to the firearm assault team, FAST, and was the lead detective on a case involving two women who were shot when driving away from the Denver Center for Performing Arts. The women left the Denver Center for the Performing Arts parking garage and noticed a car driving erratically and honking at the car in front of them. When the women turned from South Spear Boulevard onto West Colorado Avenue, they heard deafening noises and realized the driver's side window had holes in it. Simultaneously, the driver realized she'd been shot in the face and the passenger in her leg. They pulled over, switched places, and drove themselves to Denver Health. Detective Urbina was assigned this case, and the victims afterwards submitted a letter in which they indicate from their initial interaction at Denver Health that Detective Urbina showed compassion, empathy, grace, and expertise. Detective Urbina stayed in touch with the victims, responded to all their questions, and consistently provided them with information and updates during the nine weeks of investigation. Although the suspect was not identified, the victims felt that the attention Detective Urbina gave to this case empowered them, and her sergeant shared that Detective Urbina followed every investig investigatory avenue. I had the pleasure of getting to know our recipient last week. During our conversation, it was quickly apparent that Detective Urbina was everything the victim said she was, compassionate, empathic and gracious, but so much more. She's humble, embodies a tremendous sense of duty, and has an extremely high expectation of herself. In fact, she didn't quite expect this award and said simply that she was doing her job. I have to say I respectfully disagree. <laughs> Your focus was catching the bad guy but it was just as important to you that the victims, in your words, felt empowered and could move forward in some meaningful way after sustaining major trauma and serious physical injuries. To, your wor or to use your words, if I may, knowledge is power, and at the end of the day, I work for them. What was important to you once the case was investigated was equipping the victims with as much information as possible about the legal process and ensuring they understood the steps you had taken to solve the case. These women were both hurting mentally and physically. 
You recognized it and your compassion led you to share your own experience as a shooting victim. You opened up to these two women even though it was a bit painful to revisit. In return, they gained enough trust in you to talk about how it felt to function in a lesser capacity after being shot. You also used your own experience to try to make theirs better than yours. You shared what you would have done differently. For example, that you should have let more people in and not shut them out. Sometimes it's hard to draw boundaries with our victims because they are true innocents. They're hurting and they grow to depend on us throughout our cases. You were able to draw this boundary. To this day, Detective Urbina checks on the victims and they give each other updates and check in with each other. This case exemplifies that when we help others, we sometimes unintentionally gain the benefit of healing ourselves through sharing experiences and connecting with our community. And back to the boundary setting, it should be noticed or noted that the victims invited Detective Urbina to see Pink, which she respectfully declined, of course. <laughs> I am honored on behalf of Citizens Appreciate Police to present this award to Detective Catherine Urbina. Thank you for what you do, and thank you to all of you who support her in her mission. education because I thought I knew something after Googling a few things. <laughs> you know, just um, just being authentic and real and a human um, and making me feel seen. So I appreciate you. I would just say um, for all of you sitting in the room, there's a lot to be learned from Detective Urbina. I'll probably call her Dr. Urbina at some point because I switch it um, off and on. But as a member of a profession that serves others, I understand the commitment, the ownership, and the burden it can be to be in the business of people. Every day you take somebody else's life uh, as your own, and you met us with compassion, empathy, grace, and expertise. You provided us a safe place to land in the midst of chaos. Um, and I'll never forget when we closed our last conversation after reviewing the case and deciding that we were gonna close this case, uh, unsolved really, you said, what's changed for you? And our reality is everything has changed. We, uh, we see the world real different. And um, there's a lot of bad things that happen in this world, but there are so many more good things. And I think you standing in front of this room, you are evidence that strangers are amazing humans. You showed up to work, you got a call, I'm sure you were tired. You have a beautiful briefcase and a nice jacket, it was freezing. Um, but you are a stranger that is now one of the main characters in the most significant chapters of our lives. In the words of Gandhi, if you want to change the world, you have to start with yourself. And thank you for doing that. Thank you for changing our world. Uh, to the leaders in the room that support Catherine to be her authentic self, it works. 
I would say you showed up in ways exactly how we needed you, when we needed you, and so thank you. Um, thank you for allowing our families to be in the room, and thank you. I know that it's probably against the rules to reach out to us. Uh, we're officially victims, um, but I would say that we're more empowered because of humans like you, so thank you. Thank you guys for being here today. Your case will never be closed. It's just inactivated. I'm always looking for leads. We may solve this one day. I still haven't given up. So, okay. It's good to see you both. Bye. And congratulations, Detective Urbina. Um, our next presenter that is going to come up is Keith. Keith Sesame, will you come on up? Y'all see me back there? <laughs> you guys know I got jokes. <laughs> Today I have the pleasure of presenting our CAP Award to Detective Victoria Oliver. Victoria, if you'd come on up. <laughs> I got you. <laughs> I have to preface this by saying, and Victoria did not remember this, but I do. Back in 2010, as a probation officer, I was assigned to the gang unit. Um, I got a very interesting call from the jail from one of my defendants who said um, I had been greenlighted by some Crips. So that information got turned over, and to this day, I'm not sure what Victoria may have said to that person, but um, I heard he ended up crying, but I don't know that. <laughs> but, <laughs> but she did well, and I definitely appreciate her for what she did. Now, we did a few alterations to this narrative, so please bear with me. That's why she's standing beside me. She'll punch me if it's not right. <laughs> I'm kidding. Okay. Detective Cox was working off duty curbside at DIA when she was flagged down by a victim of aggravated domestic violence. After making the report, the victim advised Detective Cox that for her own safety that she could not remain in Colorado. Victim advocates arranged a safe place for the victim to stay overnight until she could catch her flight the following day. Officer Oliver picked up the victim the next day and took her back to the airport where they learned there was an error with the victim's flight and she had to rebook the following day. Sensing the victim's uh, anxiety, Officer Oliver took it upon herself to pay for the woman's flight. Officer Oliver met the victim and her friends at DIA the following day, escorted him to the gate and made it possible for the victim's friends uh, to go on board with her to say goodbye. As somebody who now works for the DA's office and assigned to the Family Violence Unit, I can definitely appreciate the extra effort that was made here and just say thank you for all of you for everything that you do. But at this time, we'd like to present a cap award to Officer Victoria Oliver. Are you ready? 
sort of to show for these guys. This is my commander. <laughs> <laughs> say about Victoria is, uh, you know, we get uh, recognized yeah, by this organization because we wear that shirt. But when you work at the third busiest airport in the world, we also represent the brand of Den. Right? And Victoria does this each and every day. Um, at times, she's a victim of social media. She gets caught on film because someone's irate about having to pay for their carry-on bag to get checked. And you see her in the background, and she talks with them, and is very empathetic. But this is just one example that she does each and every day. Congratulations, Officer Oliver. Um, our next speaker, if we can have Mike O'Neill come up. See, uh, Officer Matthew Jeffrey, could you come up? <clears throat> and I understand that. Um, Oh, and Officer Marty Deal. Marty, here, okay. He was standing in for uh, Officer, let's see, your officer. This happens a lot. <laughs> yeah, uh, anyway, we're honoring Officer Marty Deal, Officer Jordan Matthews, and you're standing in for Jordan, okay and Corporal Kendall Padilla, who couldn't be here, so Lieutenant Curtis standing in for, uh, good. So I'm really not too sure who's here. <laughs> <laughs> I'll accept that third award. Um, I just wanted to congratulate everybody that's part of this today, Officer Detective Urbina, truly remarkable, the job she did and leave it to the Denver Police Department to punish her by making her work for Sergeant Bisgard. <laughs> <laughs> That's part of DPD logic. Um, I owe Troy big time. Um, we worked together in District 2. I de developed heart palpitations. Um, uh, almost had a nervous breakdown, but um, he and his partner, the rest of his team did just incredible work, and I know that continues to this day. Uh, I had the privilege of being a Denver police officer for 37 years. I have a nephew and a son on the job, and I keep waiting for them to do something good so they can <laughs> be up here. But, uh, Chief, can you keep a close eye on Well, yeah. Um, anyway, um, this is just uh, remarkable today, as are all these cap board meetings. And what's even more remarkable is how much of this work goes on every day is never recognized. And one of the beauties of being a police officer, especially in Denver, um, is the uh, opportunity to do good. And um, these officers today have all seized that opportunity and done good for others. And uh, like I say, most of it goes unrecognized, um, but it's just wonderful uh, what they do. So uh, for these three officers, <laughs> Officer Marty Deal, Officer Jordan Matthews, and uh, Corporal Kendall Padilla, I'll just read it, it's brief. Officers responded to the Walgreens at 120 North Broadway on a report from concerned staff about a customer inside the store causing a disturbance. The officers were able to de-escalate the situation 
and learned the in-store ATM did not give the individual the money he requested, but did subtract it from his account, leaving him without funds to manage the housing and food issues faced by himself and his five-year-old son. Officers connected the individual with the Denver Police Outreach Case Coordinator to assist with the immediate issues. The officers then purchased food for the man and his son out of their own pockets. Um, and we are trained as police officers never to let the professional and the personal cross lines. We never let the personal become a part of our jobs. Um, these officers today all violated that, and I'm told uh, <laughs> the law be suspended for 10 days without pay. But at least they'll have a nice uh, award. Um, do you guys have anybody here that uh, you want to introduce? Friends, family? Um, do you have friends? No. Or family? <laughs> no. no? no okay. Um, Lieutenant Curtis, do you have anything you'd like to add to this? It's really, this is just a demonstration of the great work that District 3 officers do day in and day out. These guys are constantly out there faced with high call volumes, but yet they still manage to find the time to take that second and take that opportunity when it presents itself to really take care of the people out there in the community. And it, it just goes to show the caliber of the people that we have here at the Denver Police Department. Thank you. Chief, did he recite that the way you wrote it? <laughs> even better, a little after, so even better. Oh, very good. Um, so anyway, thank you for a, a job really well done. Uh, you can grab the awards that uh, uh, pertinent. Chief, would you like to uh, step up? Good smile. For our final award, I'm going to ask um, Beth, can you come up? Sure. And Officer Jeffrey, sure, you should have just <laughs> stayed up here. I need you back, please. This time, he is actually receiving an award, along with Officer Landwehr. And there she is. Thank you for standing in for the officers that couldn't be here. We appreciate Absolutely. that. Well, I want to echo something that Mike just said. It was the opportunity to do good. And ironically, it was very close to Christmas when this happened. And this was acknowledged by a fellow first responder, a paramedic named Sterling Barnes. Sent a letter to his lieutenant, went up their chain, hopped the fence, came up through ours, and made its way to us. So I'm really happy to be able to acknowledge what these officers did the day before Christmas Eve last year. They had responded to a call at the Micro Center at 8000 East Quincy. The call was about an elderly couple who had become stranded in Denver from their home in Conifer. They had come down just anticipating making a day trip. They were dressed in very inappropriate clothing, very light clothing for the weather that turned so foul. And their battery died, and they ran out of gas. The manager at the micro center store was able to jump the car, and somebody there took up a collection and paid for gas at the nearby station. The officers who responded, as well as the fir other first responders, were really concerned about this elderly couple driving back up into the mountains. It's getting late in the afternoon, and it's very cold. They were trying to sort out what to do with these folks, because no one wanted them driving in adverse weather. They went back and forth, discussed it amongst themselves, and came up with the officers came up with the idea to get them a hotel room at the nearby Marriott for the night. The officers not only paid for the hotel room out of their own pocket, 
They escorted the elderly couple over there, led them over there in their marked patrol car, and escorted them into the hotel. One of the comments that the paramedic who wrote the letter said is, this was a Christmas miracle for the family that was helped. And I absolutely agree. And it's just such a wonderful opportunity for me to be able to acknowledge what you all did. So thank you. Thank you so much for what you did. Now, because you couldn't speak for the other officers for the last award, would you like to speak on your own behalf? <laughs> and do you have family here, or any, either of you? Anyone you'd like to acknowledge, to bring up, coworkers, anyone? Unfortunately, my wife couldn't be here today. But, oh, uh, I'm sorry. Yeah. But thank you very much for the honor. Okay. <laughs> I'm not surprised. Okay. Well, I happily get to give you one you actually get to hold on to, and a pen, and this nifty little cover. Covers are up here if anybody wants them, if you want it. Do you have the rest of the notes? Um, I'll just go ahead and ask if anybody is here today that wanted to say anything before we close the ceremony. Um, you're welcome to come on up and speak. Is there any um, command staff or any dignitaries that had anything to say about the award winners today that would like to speak? We're good? All right. Well, I just want to sincerely congratulate all of our award winners. Um, thank you, thank you for the work you do and for the difference you make. Um, we want to honor all of our Denver police officers uh, who serve in the line of duty every day and who take the risk and the sacrifice on a daily basis to protect and keep the community members of Denver safe. Thank you for your service. Thank you to the CAP board. Uh, and um, please remember, um, we see you, we appreciate you, and we need you. Thank you for your service. That concludes today's ceremony.